happy holidays, everyone. Uh, we're coming up on Christmas. Uh, and some of what I'm going to tell you will we'll time this exactly. Uh, yesterday, we uh, lost, we were notified of the loss of two of the giants in fire EMS. Uh, Bobby Halton uh, is a fire chief, uh, has been a leader in the industry and one of the premier educators and a leader of uh, the FDIC conference, which is the largest fire conference in the country. Um, Susan McHenry, um, a, a legion in EMS in her federal position and in the state of Virginia position. Both of them died uh, over the last couple of days, very sad. Uh, this is the time of the year when we have so many unfortunate deaths. And locally here, uh, one of my friends is losing his dad. And uh, you feel so terrible this time of the year uh, with the deaths that occur. And then we go out and we face emergencies in the community. And, um, and as, you're, as you're dealing with some of these, and in our area, we had a couple of fatals uh, over, the, over the last 24 hours. And you're thinking, oh, what is the impact on the family gonna be? It's Christmas, it's New Year's, and, uh, and we're losing family members. So take care of yourselves, your community, uh, and be careful. The next timely issue is a huge storm moving across the country with life-threatening cold. Cold is what kills people and wind and ice. The, those are the three winter events that really kill people. A little bit of snow associated with this. Uh, obviously, whiteout conditions uh, kill people and some of those wrecks. But be very careful in a broad stretch of the country now, exposed to very bitter cold uh, temperatures and even worse wind chills, so life-threatening wind chills, uh, icing conditions with flash freezes in a lot of areas, uh, with power lines down and, uh, and with the associated uh, risk to our public safety people uh, as they try to move around and do things. And then in our community, uh, we, we have the fire risk this time of the year. Please be very careful. On the infectious disease, we are turning the corner, it appears. This is the, the best news. So, and what, what we hope will lead us right into 2023. COVID cases going up a little bit. Um, the variants now have caused us to do one important thing, and that is to pretty much shelve our monoclonal antibodies as treatment. And one of them is prophylaxis. We have been able to use those drugs, which either get infused in an IV or, or are given in an intramuscular shot. Uh, and use them to both treat people and to help prevent disease, and in particular, serious disease. Um, the, the, the movement of the coronavirus as it, it moves through the, the variants make each of those less effective. And we've reached the point now where we really don't have an effective treatment. The only remaining treatments um, that are really good are the ones that go in the mouth. And uh, we have uh, Paxlovid, which is still uh, a, a an oral uh, antiviral agent that can be used, and molnupiravir, uh, which has a little more complications and problems associated with it. Uh, we still have those available, although uh, with the cases in the country, they're in relatively short supply. Uh, so there's a theme to short supply that's going to go through this. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, for those of you in healthcare. Uh, you know, we've referred people to, for monoclonal treatments, uh, and that's no longer an option. Uh, and now it's going to be the oral agents for COVID. A little increase in hospitalization for COVID, nothing near the severity uh, that it has been for the last two years, going on three years. Um, and uh, we will be watching it carefully for any new variants, but so far across the globe, nothing that's a big concern. What we do have to watch carefully, uh, China essentially has come into the world now and will have COVID running through it. Um, that relates to events in China. We have to be very careful, but the Chinese are really good about controlling infectious disease outbreaks. And if they see new variants occurring that are a risk to the bigger population or to the world, they're likely to shut down uh, China. Uh, so be, be aware of that. The big event occurring now in this country is influenza A, and particularly influenza A, H3N2, uh, but a little bit of H1N1. Uh, those are now causing significant numbers of hospitalizations, and in particular problems with people who have underlying medical diseases, chest problems, lung problems, belly problems, 
uh, cancer, et cetera, get influenza, they get very sick and end up in the hospital. And we've had deaths amongst both older people and, and pediatrics so far from influenza A. Uh, our vaccine, very effective, still time to go get a vaccine. If you haven't been vaccinated with the flu vaccine, it is a good match uh, for the variants uh, that, are, that are in play now. We've had essentially no influenza B in the country, just, just almost none. Uh, but the influenza A's uh, we have as part of the uh, vaccine this year. Uh, I got mine and uh, mm, knock on wood, still safe so far. RSV uh, is on a downslope across most of the country. So that's the pediatric uh, virus that has been causing a lot of the youngest children to get sick. A real big concern in those under six months of age uh, and in any kids who have underlying medical problems. Our children's hospitals were absolutely full uh, for the preceding couple of months. And now they're beginning to have some capacity uh, because the RSV bolus has gone down. In my community, there are more children being uh, admitted to Children's Hospital now for influenza A than RSV. That's kind of a critical turnover. It is unlikely uh, that we will have another influenza spread later in the winter, just so everyone is aware. And here's the good news about moving into 2023. Uh, we, we are making it through a, a very significant risk period for all infectious diseases. We've done COVID. We knew that coming out of COVID, we'd be at risk for other things. So that's the influenza and the RSV. Um, there are little things on the on the horizon, still a little Ebola outbreak in Africa. Um, there's scabies, um, there's an enterovirus, there's some strep, all of those things we would ordinarily hear about in the winter anyway, other than Ebola. Um, and so we will be careful and monitoring those. But moving into 2023, it appears that for the first time in a while, we will be able to talk about health care, health concerns, other than infectious diseases. The outcome of, the, of COVID has been troublesome in that we have not been keeping up with our routine vaccinations. In my Ohio community, we now have measles uh, breaking out uh, because we fell behind in our routine immunizations. Uh, and when you fall behind in a disease that is as infectious as measles, uh, you could have significant outbreaks occur very quickly. So we still have a very effective measles, mumps, and rubella vaccination. Uh, measles is a disease that can kill young people and people with underlying medical problems. We don't want outbreaks of measles to start occurring again. And we have gone years without, without measles outbreaks. And now one is occurring and it presents a big risk for some people and for hospitals who don't want measles within the hospital community. We've had some small mumps outbreaks. Uh, so bottom line, get the kids immunized. We still have our vaccine immunization series that has to occur on a regular set of intervals when the kids are little, we need to plug them back in. Our other big concern in the community is, uh, is substance use and mental health issues, which have become such a terrible thing for so many people. We now have over 100,000 people a year dying of overdoses. Uh, the vast majority of them are fentanyl overdoses and they're unintentional overdoses uh, because of fentanyl being in the, uh, the drug stream of illicit drugs mixed in and all kinds of things. And there's, there is um, a, a, a lot of fentanyl moving into the country. I saw a figure today that there are, there's so much fentanyl that has been caught at the borders and by law enforcement, it would be a dose for every American in the country. That's what they've picked up. That's what they have picked up and destroyed. Um, so there's a lot of fentanyl moving in. Um, very small amounts can be very fatal um, to people of any age, of any body type. And you've seen some of our celebrities and other people who have died of those overdoses. So we have to now manage um, some outcomes of COVID, uh, like the lack of vaccinations, uh, like mental health stress on so many people in the community like substance use that has now become very fatal 
Um, and so moving into those areas in 2023 is our opportunity. For those of you in the cold regions, which now extend all the way down to the Gulf Coast, please be careful uh, over the next uh, week uh, when, when uh, still that polar vortex uh, will be moving through the country um, and will be a very stressful event for those people in the cold areas. Uh, we hope that Texas doesn't get hit again because it's going to get very cold as it did a few years ago, which really disrupted a lot of things and caused lives to be lost in Texas. And that kind of sweep down through Oklahoma and the other southern states uh, usually results in some bad outcomes. So be careful about that. Enjoy the holiday time. Enjoy our time back together. Um, enjoy the camaraderie of, of working with people who do a great job around you. And that's where I am. And I'm very thankful this year for all of the people uh, that I have worked with, worked around. As we move out of COVID, you can't, you can't forget those people who've been so important to all of us. And we have to appreciate the opportunity to be together again. So I hope you will do that over the holidays. I will see you next in 2023. And again, we're gonna focus on issues and emerging threats that may not include infectious diseases for the first time, and you'll be very happy about that. So have a great holiday season. Doc Talk returns in 2023. Thank you all.